Welcome to this new series from Learn and Gain on ServiceNow Event Management. In this part of event management, we will discuss about event rules and processing. Please subscribe and support our channel to create more educational videos. Just a reminder that this in no way shape or form should be considered as an official training material on the event management module. This is only an attempt to provide basic information on how to configure and implement event management. Please refer to ServiceNow product documentation for most recent updates. Event rule is one of the key components of event transformation. There are predefined event rules available in the system that can transform events from certain monitoring systems to align with ServiceNow data model. A common example would be standardizing the severity indicators from the monitoring system to align with event management severity levels in the system. Event rules assist with parsing data from raw events, converting an event into an alert, bind CIs beyond the default binding to the node. Binding refers to the configuration item that you see on an incident record. A simple example where binding can help is assume a scenario where there is a database event, but the node or configuration item mentioned is a server instead of the actual database instance as the database runs on the host. In this scenario, an incident record would be created and assigned to the concerned platform support instead of database support. This is where binding can help, where the default binding can be overridden and bind the corresponding CI that makes most sense for ID operations. An event is a record inserted into the event table where event rules and field mappings are applied to generate an alert. As events occur on various systems, the mid-server connector instance sends the events to the ServiceNow instance. Event management generates alerts, applies alert management rules, and prioritizes alerts for remediation and root cause analysis. Let's do a deep dive on how events are being processed. When an event record is created in the event table, the system checks for an existing event rule. The first thing that the system checks is the source of the event. If the source of the event matches the source in an existing rule, then a rule is matched. A rule is matched, even if the additional filters match. An event rule needs to have filter conditions specified. Rules without filter conditions will be ignored. You can also ignore events matching a specific criterion by selecting the Ignore Events checkbox within an event rule. If Transform and Compose tabs are defined, the event information will be parsed and transformed to the desired output. If thresholds are enabled, events are accumulated until a threshold is met. This is similar to polling within a monitoring tool based on the defined threshold against a metric. If no event rules match, default binding occurs using the node information to find a matching configuration item using host name, IP, or MAC address, and the processing further continues. Field mapping and severity validation occurs post that. It is always recommended that you bind the alert to a specific CI for root cause analysis. Note, if there is no severity defined at this point, the state of the event is set to error and alert generation does not occur. As a final step before an alert generation, the system searches for any matching message key. If a matching message key exists, it updates the existing alert and the event will be associated to the alert. A new alert is created if there is no matching message key. As we saw in our earlier series, Part 4 on Event Record, the state determines the life cycle of an event. One can look at the processing notes within an event record that provides more information on which event rule was applied, did CI binding occur, field mapping rules that were applied, and so on. Event Rules as we discussed during Event Management Introduction, Part 2 of this series, Event Rules bind alerts to a specific configuration item within the CMDB, showing what application service is impacted within the operations workspace. Event Rules are also used to transform and compose alert information from a raw event and populate meaningful information within the respective alert fields. 
Event rules can also be used to ignore events that match the filter conditions. Event rules can also be used to reduce incident noise until a defined threshold is reached. An alert will not be generated until an event that occurs with the defined threshold or more than the defined value. Event rule contains the following tabs. Event rule info. This is the first tab within an event rule that filters events based on the source. All sources will be included if the source is blank. Name. Provide an appropriate name for the event rule. Source refers to the source of event generation. Order represents the order in which the event rules are processed. Lower the order number, higher precedence. Description. You can add a description as needed. If apply additional matching rules is selected, additional matching rules will also be processed. Depending on your actual requirement, you can enable this option. Event filter tab. This is the second tab within the event rule where additional filters can be applied. Checking, ignore events that match this filter will prevent the system from processing the events that meet these criteria. Define filter conditions as appropriate so the required events are processed. Event rules can be updated as needed if you need to make modifications at a later stage. Transform and Compose the third tab within an event rule is the Transform and Compose. This is where an event information is transformed to the desired output, so meaningful events are processed. In an actual scenario, not every field will have the desired input. Your node information may be in the description field, severity information, or could be within additional information. In order to move the node and severity value to the appropriate event field for processing, transform and compose can help. Let's take a look at a short demo on these three tabs of event rule. In this demo, we are generating an event from a monitoring tool named Dell NG Monitoring for a C drive error on a Windows server. Navigate to Event Management, All Events, or search for the same within the navigation pane. The All Events navigation displays all the generated event records. Click on the event to open the event record. You can view all the fields that were populated by the monitoring system. Note that the node field is blank and severity is none. As mentioned earlier in this video, when severity is blank, state of the event would be error. Click on Create Event Rule on the top right or bottom left. Some of the information would be pre-populated, such as source. Provide a meaningful name for the event rule, so we know what this rule is used for. You can also add a brief description as needed. You can select Apply Additional Matching Rule if needed. Remember, when selected, additional matching rules will also be processed. Within Event Filter, we can define additional filter criteria. Here we are filtering events based on description that starts with C drive error. We are also adding another filter criteria based on source instances LNG. Next in Transform and Compose, we will need to populate or map node and severity information. We know that the status is marked as 2. Default number mappings for severity is already defined within the field mappings. Select status, the regex window pops up. Select the value and we are mapping it against the severity. You can switch between mark expressions or write regex. For non-developers, working on marking expressions will be a lot easier, but we will need to learn regex eventually to parse information as needed in the real-world scenario. We also noted that the IP address is mentioned in the description field. We will use that information to populate the node field, as the node field is blank. Select the IP address and tag against node field. 
In the expressions pane on the right, you can see severity as to and notice the provided IP address within the event. Once the transformation is complete, click Submit. We are generating another event from the monitoring system for the same scenario. You can notice the additional event generated. If you look at the state now, it shows as processed and alert column is populated with a value. Open the event record to view the state of the event. It shows as processed. In the processing notes, you can notice that the event rule applied was C drive error demo. You can also see the CI binding information within the processing notes. Open the alert record and look at the severity and configuration item fields. Severity is populated as major, as number two from event record is mapped to major severity. Configuration item listed is Windows LNG demo server, as the IP is binded to the actual CI within CMDB. In the related tabs below, you can see the events tab with the actual event listed. Remember as events are cleared after 5 days, you may see the number of events on the header, but the records will not be listed, as they are removed as a part of table rotation. In the next chapter, we will discuss about the other tabs, threshold, and binding within an event rule. We will have the entire training segmented into multiple videos to provide a better understanding of each segment. Please support our channel by subscribing to create more educational videos. Thank you and have a wonderful day.